Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. In Luke chapter 11, we have some very privileged information. Here, the disciples get to ask the Creator Himself how we ought to pray. And that's kind of how the chapter begins. The disciples are asking the Lord, teach us how to pray. As John taught his disciples how to pray, teach us also how to pray. And what a wonderful blessing it is to have the Creator Himself telling us how to pray. In John chapter 1, we're told that through Jesus, all things were made and nothing was made that was not made through him. And now we have uh, the very creator himself telling us how to pray, which is a wonderful, wonderful blessing. And he begins the chapter by talking about some specific things that they should pray for, uh, as is commonly called the Lord's Prayer, which is a kind of gives us some Specific things to pray for, the types of things that we can lift up into prayer uh, towards our Father. But then he gets into our approach to prayer. Um, it's not only important to know what to pray, but it's also important to know how to pray. And that's what he covers as he continues on in verse 5 through 13. And it basically falls under two categories. One, being persistent. And two, uh, coming with expectation. So we need to have persistence and expectation when we come to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we should be persistent or bold when we come to the Lord. Uh, and he uses a, a parable here to describe this. He talks about a, a person who goes to a friend at midnight and says, hey, I need three loaves of food, uh, three loaves of bread. And, and he says, you know, even though the man might be tucked away, his children may already be in bed, his door may be already shut. Still, because the guy's so persistent, because he's coming to him with such confidence that uh, he's going to get up and he's going to give him the three loaves of bread. And that's the encouragement to us to be persistent in prayer, that we, sh we can boldly come to the throne of grace uh, in time of need, and to come to God with our problems and our trials. And not to be reluctant to take these things to the Lord in prayer. Um, not doing it in a way in which we think, well, uh, I don't think it's going to help, but I'll just throw a prayer out there. But coming to the Lord just uh, and just telling Him what we need. And being very bold and very confident and very persistent. And uh, sharing with the Lord the things that we need and the things that we are praying for. So we can be persistent, but also be expectant as well come to the lord with expectancy he says in verse 9 so i say to you ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be open to you for everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be open and he goes on to talk about you know even a even in human relationships a father is going to give good gifts to his son and so we can expect good things from our father too when we come to him in prayer and so we can come to the Lord with expectancy, knowing that he hears our prayers and knowing that he listens to what we uh, are asking. And we can be confident that we're coming to him as a good father. Uh, he is a good father to us. And we can come to him with expectancy and know that he's going to help us, especially when we obey, as First John chapter 3 and verse 22 talks about, when we confess uh, any sins that we perhaps have committed uh, Psalm 66 and verse 18 talks about that. If we're abiding in Christ, we can have confidence about our prayers being answered in John 15 and verse 7. Uh, if we're asking according to God's will, 1 John chapter uh, 5 and verse 14. If we're asking in faith, uh, uh, again, going back to this idea of coming to him with expectancy, but Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. If we're coming with pure motives, that we're not just asking a bunch of selfish prayers for our own comfort or pleasure, but we're really seeking uh, the better things and we're coming to him, uh, we can uh, come to him with expectancy. That uh, James chapter 4 and verse 3 talks about that. Uh, if we're living peaceably with other people, we have confidence to come before him. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Uh, they're talking about the husband's treating the wife right if a husband's not treating his wife right then his prayers will be hindered but the opposite is true as well if we are treating our wives right or that could go with other human relationships if we're treating other people right then we can have confidence when we come before the lord just as james chapter 5 and verse 16 says that a 
the prayer of a righteous man prevails much. It accomplishes much. And so we can come to the Lord with expectancy, especially if we li we're living a life where we're obe obeying him. Uh, if we do sin, we confess those sins. If we're abiding in Christ, if we're asking in accordance to the will of God and we're asking in faith and we have pure motives in the prayers that we offer uh, and we're living peaceably with other people, we can have confidence and expectation in coming to the Lord and knowing that more than most likely he's going to answer our prayer. And the only reason he would not answer our prayer at that point would be if in his great wisdom he sees that this isn't the best thing. Now, if you read uh, this section where he talks about, uh, suppose one of you one of you fathers is asked by his son for a fish, he will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he asks for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And here he's saying, you know, a father is not going to give the child something dangerous. If the child's asking for something good, he's not going to give them something bad. But the same thing would be true as well. The reverse would be true as well. Suppose the child is asking for a snake or the child is asking for a scorpion. Of course, a good father is not going to give a child a snake just because he or she is asking for it, nor will he give them a, scor a scorpion. He's, he wants to give good gifts to the children. And the same thing is true with our Heavenly Father. Sometimes we're asking for a snake and we don't even know it. <laughs> we're asking for a scorpion. We think this is the best thing. We think this is what's good. But the Lord in His infinite wisdom and His great knowledge knows what's healthy for us, what's good for us. Uh, it may not be comfortable for us at the moment. We may not, It may not be pleasurable for us at the moment, but He knows what the ultimate good is. And so He's going to give us what is best for us. And so... As we do our reading in Luke chapter 11, let's be encouraged to pray. Here we have a wonderful text in which the Lord is giving us some specific things we can pray for, but at the same time helping us to know what type of um, attitudes we should have when we're going to the Lord in prayer. And this can help stimulate our prayer life and help us to be able to pray in a way that, that pleases the Father, but at the same time is effective and allowing us to receive the things that we ask from the Father uh, as we continue this journey through life. So these are some things we can reflect on and think about as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.